Welcome back folks, I am Jack aka Mr Wolfie and this is the second video in my mini series aimed at helping you climb League of Legends solo queue. Earlier this split we went from Bronze 4 to Emerald 4 in under a month and I'm here to share some of the info and techniques that I gained along the way. Whether you're having a tough time in ranked or maybe just looking to get back into it, I'm here to create some discussions and help you out where I can. This guide will be more directed towards climbing as the support role, sharing 15 in-game practical tips that you can start to use today. If you're interested in a more broad approach on how to prepare mentally for solo queue, then please check out my first video. As a very quick disclaimer, this guide is aimed at helping players from Iron all the way up to Emerald. So if you're above this rank, then obviously you may not find as much value in some of these points, but please feel free to provide your own advice in the comments below. Here we go. To get us started, we discussed in the first video that improvement is often generated after you change a number of small details. Therefore, the first thing that I'm going to recommend that you do is to go into your in-game UI settings and increase the minimap size. This is something that you can do immediately and requires zero mechanical skill. A few seconds of your time and boom, you're now 1% more aware than you were 5 seconds ago. Early game skirmishes are often the prime decider of which team will have the advantage pre-20 minutes. As a support player, you have to be aware of what's going on around you in order to make the best decisions. Fiddle about with what feels comfortable, but just increase the map size from whatever the default is. At number 2 is another nice easy one. At the start of the game, cover the jungle entrances, please. The fact that players still do not do this in the modern day is incredulous to me. If the enemy invades to the try and kills your jungler, that is your fault. On red side, you typically want to cover the ramp below blue buff, or cover the path above if your mid laner is AFK. When on blue side, getting to the try brush early on is key, but guarding the river entrance above is also fine if your ADC is already in try. I know this is peak time to watch funny cat videos on YouTube, but just make sure you're at least being useful whilst doing so. At number 3, mute toxic or nonsensical teammates immediately. This is a toughie, but it really shouldn't be. Do not waste your time debating or trying to educate in solo queue. I know this is hard to do, but you will very likely never see this person again. The more time spent typing, is less time focusing on the game state and improving your chances of winning. If you're still arguing with your top lane zero 9 Tristana after 5 seconds, you are inadvertently the one trolling. Genuinely. Drop the slash mute or simply turn off the chat pre-game if this is a constant plague for you. Resume focus afterwards and enjoy the rest of your game without distraction. This may be considered boring, but champion mastery is your best tool to succeeding consistently. A new hero every game can be fun, but detrimental to your overall progress if you're serious about climbing. It may be cliche, but it's better to be a master of one than a master of none. Playing the same two or three heroes will truly let you understand the strengths of your character and also their weaknesses. This will also allow you to better assess situations on the fly and make better decisions overall. Similarly, and especially in low elo, your best champions will often also trump the meta. In other words, it's more important for you to be playing a hero that you are competent at than a hero that is considered S plus in the current patch notes. Unless your pocket pick is something absurd like Evelyn support or something bizarre, you should probably put that on the bench. Stick to what you know and play it consistently. Number 5. Avoid enchanters below gold. This is personal preference for support, but I would say that in the lower ranks, try to avoid playing enchanters if possible. These heroes definitely have their place in the game and they can also be alright to play, however in the chaos of solo queue, they will give you very little agency or control over the game state. Many of the enchanter supports are about protecting or enabling other players, but if these players in question are 0-20 every game, you'd be better off shielding a ward. If you haven't already, I would consider picking up some engaged supports. This will give you more power in the game to influence or even carry in certain scenarios. Damage supports can also be great for covering the missing spots in your team comp if your team has drafted a squad that's heavy in one department. Although Janna and Sona can be relaxing to play, it will become very mentally taxing watching your ADC in 10 games in a row. Instead, do you and your team a favour by watching the enemy ADC in 10 games in a row and repeatedly capitalise on this with a much more aggressive pick. Number 6. Base faster. 90% of the time, you should be trying to base immediately after a double kill or tower plate bot to spend your gold. Shove the wave as fast as you can and recall. If you can't shove the wave, just base. Do not get caught greed staying in the lane and get trapped by the enemy who have just shopped and returned at full HP. This is obviously situational, but a good recall where you can return to lane with new items in time to catch the wave is very crucial. A bad base will lead to the enemy getting their own plates and you missing gold and XP. On this topic, if your ADC overstays for extra waves or plates or whatever, then you have to learn to leave them. 
I normally ping my gold and type spend in the chat, and then at this point, you have done all that you can. If the ADC overstays and dies and then pings you, that is on them, you have to ignore it. Similarly, when your team takes a big objective like Dragon or Baron, you should be recalling 90% of the time. Basing as a 5 man and coming out of the base together is way more important than picking up the enemy blue buff or getting that deep ward that you want. Again, this is unlikely in solo queue, I understand that and it is super situational, but in general, you want to be ready with your team if the option is available. In most cases, you typically want to be picking up your red trinket sweeper as soon as possible. Ideally, pre 5 minutes or as soon as you upgrade your support item. This is obviously dependent on lane matchups and jungle pressure, however, the main thing to take away is that if you still haven't picked up your sweeper by 10 minutes, you're not doing your job properly. Denying vision in the bot river will put immense pressure on mid and bot, especially for hook champions. Similarly, grabbing shoes should be one of your first priorities each match. Many of your games will be determined, as we discussed earlier, in the first 15 minutes. Mobility is the key to you being able to roam or respond to the mid-river skirmishes that are guaranteed to happen. If you're not impacting these in the majority of your games, you are not doing your job appropriately. Turning up for an objective as it spawns, i.e. the dragon or the baron, is not good enough as a support. As the only player in the game that does not need to farm waves of minions, it is your job to be at the terrain of the next objective before the other team. This is in order to remove enemy wards and set up your own vision. Game state allowing, you should be at these spots roughly 10 seconds before in order to achieve your tasks. This advice is incredibly more relevant for hook and engage supports as it is these mid-game skirmishes that give you the best opportunity to sway the game in your favour. Deny vision and force the enemy to blindly funnel into you. They will make the mistakes and you will be there ready to capitalise. At number 9 we have wave management. This is a concept that is almost a myth in low elo and it can be hard to influence when your ADC has more control over the wave than you do. When the minions are shoving into your tower, try to catch the wave and use your character to hold it there. If your ADC doesn't listen and monkey shoves, then it's fine, as at this point you've done all that you can. But if they listen and keep the wave there, then you will have bought yourself 30 seconds to a minute of safe laning, keeping you away from the enemy jungle and presenting a nice welcoming map for your own jungler. This is probably the simplest example that I can showcase at the moment, but it's a good start to using the minions to set up a better game state for your bot lane. Pumping out damage as an AP support is easy, but staying alive is much harder. As a damage support, it is your responsibility to keep your deaths under a respectable number so that your positive impact is not mitigated by you feeding. In order to do this, being more reserved and playing safer when your flash or exhaust and stopwatch are down is incredibly important. It is okay to sit more defensively in the lane if these tools are unavailable, you can feign threatening behaviour whilst also playing more carefully. Don't sit 12 years behind your ADC, instead communicate your cooldowns clearly and maintain your wards more vigorously. Damage supports are so powerful but come with the baggage of being extremely vulnerable. Respect this, play around it and you will become much more useful. Moving on then, within your pool of champions, pick what your team is missing in champ select. If your team needs engage, consider pivoting into engage. If your mid top have picked Zed Yasso, then consider picking some AP. If your team has a lot of poke, maybe pick up a disengager to protect them from the enemy assassins. Complement your team and plug the holes where you can, just make sure that you're not forced onto something you have no idea how to play. As a final side note, please don't first time a champion in ranked. If you want to learn pike, run it down in a few normals before terrorising your solo queue teammates. There is going to be enough people doing this on your team, you certainly don't need to be adding to the fire. In a losing scenario, identifying who the fed enemy player is and playing away from them in the mid game is a skill. Once you are past 30 minutes and 5v5s are happening, swapping up the focus to this character is the next step. Maybe you've lost the last 3 fights in a row and the team mental is low. Looking at the scoreboard and identifying that Master Yi is their only win condition is the first step to turning a game around. On the flip side, tabbing the scoreboard and realising who is fed on your team is the next logical step to give yourself a free advantage. Do you have a 6-1 Rengar? Follow him and not your 0-8 Fiora. Sorry Fiora. On a related note, shifting gears to accommodate a scaling teammate is a similar skill. Do you have a kill top? Maybe you don't have to fight over every dragon. Do you have a vein in lane with cull and cleanse? Maybe you don't have to win the all in level 2 against the enemy Callista. Sometimes reducing aggression and leaning more towards protection and defence is more useful in these scenarios. 
It takes a bit of practice, but recognising the win con and identifying the strongest members of your team will win you more games on the whole. On a similar and extremely basic note, if you are winning on a specific hero, then keep playing that hero. The amount of times I see players win 5 games in a row on Thresh and then drop them like a hot potato after a loss is insane. I understand that you need a mental reset sometimes, I definitely feel this as well, but in general, play to your strengths and don't give up on a pick after 1 or 2 losses. If you're winning a lot on said hero, then you're obviously doing something correct. Keep at it and see how far you can push. Ok, buckle up because this is a spicy one. Getting camped early by the enemy jungler is actually a win, assuming that you don't die. Some players will get frustrated if they see the enemy J4 hanging out on their ward for the third time in 3 minutes. This can feel particularly annoying if you're trying to learn the limitations of your hero, or if you are in a particularly aggressive 2v2. Although I give out about getting camped like everyone else, when I am in my best mindset, I know that this is a boon for my team. Obviously, again, assuming that I am not dying. Every second that this little rascal waits in that try brush is him falling further and further behind. By doing very little, you are actively siphoning pressure and pulling his time away from ganking your allies and farming. In addition, although you can't guarantee it, your jungler should be getting more space to do his business in the rest of the map. I see a lot of players typing in all chat sometimes, telling the enemy jungler like, hey we see you lol, or like, go camp elsewhere, kick W. Don't ever do this. Be smart, let him waste his time, and profit. Lastly, I've got another controversial topic that I've seen a multitude of different takes on. This is more of an optional tip than anything, as it's certainly not necessary. Apologising after a mistake in lane or in the later stages of the map can help maintain the fragile relationship that you have with your teammates. This might be more of a bot lane thing, as you're more codependent than the other roles. And again, you shouldn't be typing a lot, if at all. However, I have found that a simple my bad after you botch a play can sometimes help keep tempers at bay for a few more minutes. In all honesty, it's not really your job to chill mind the emotions of strangers on the internet, this sounds like a losing battle for solo queue anyway. But, in my personal experience, I have found that a brief sorry goes a long way in mollifying anger in general. Normally, when someone apologises to me, I tend to immediately relax ever so slightly, even if I'm still not completely happy. Again, a definite strange point that comes second to the other tools in this list, but I'll leave it up to you guys to decide. As a last minute bonus tip, I'm going to teach you guys how to handle a disconnect because apparently nobody in solo queue knows what to do when this occurs. If someone in your team disconnects, either because of a rage quit or randomly because of lag or whatever, please don't tell the enemy team. Not only is this line of behaviour small pp pathetic, but let's say that your jungler has disconnected by accident. When he does reconnect, all of his camps are going to be gone and you've helped the enemy team do it. In the event of a rage quit, yes, it's not guaranteed, but more often than not, a DC player will come back to the game. When this happens, yes, your chances of winning may be very low, but if you give up as well, then your chances of winning will become close to zero. In any case, crying about it to the enemy team will never improve your chances of winning. It will just make you look like a spanner. This was 15 basic tips for climbing as a support in low elo solo queue. If you'd like to hear more generalised advice and haven't seen my first video on how to mentally deal with the rank ladder, then feel free to check that out. I have loved making these guides over the last few days, so if you've found anything useful in here, then please shoot me a rating and let me know in the comments. I have been Jack, aka Mr Wolfie. Good luck in your climb. Thanks for watching.